Hey there, my name is Rocco and welcome to my channel where I make tutorial videos on DAS 3D to help you get the most out of your DAS 3D renders. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at depth of field or DOF as you might hear it called. Uh, depth of field is something that adds an element of realism to our renders as it blurs out parts of the image that would realistically be out of focus if we were looking at the scene with our own eyes. Uh, if you look around where, where you're currently sat, uh, you know, and focus on an object or a person, you'll notice that in the periphery of your vision that the background and the foreground will be somewhat out of focus, uh, while the object that you're actually looking at will be nice and clear. Now that's depth of field and that's the effect I'm going to show you how to achieve in DAS 3D. Now I generally probably always, always put a little bit of depth of field in every image that I do but when I'm looking around I don't see many other people using it. Uh, now I don't know if that's people just don't like the effect or people don't know how to do it, uh, I don't know but we're going to have a look at it today, how you can add depth of field to your images, I'll show you how, how to do it and how to get all the different effects that you can get. Now as you can see here, I've already got a scene loaded in. I'm currently going through a bit of a, a fantasy barbarian scene uh, stage at the moment. And this is an image that I've just done over the last week or so where I have used DOP. And once again, I figured I'd use a real life scene rather than just manufacture something. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with this scene. Show you how I got the, the, the effects that I got in this scene. Uh, and show you how we did it and, and how we get all the other effects that you can get with DOF. Uh, as usual, you'll be able to find the links to all the assets that are in this scene down below if you like what you see, so make sure that you check them out. Now, before we jump into all the technicalities about the setup, the, the depth of field in our renders and, our, and in our scenes, I'm just going to briefly touch upon the, the five, well, the four different states of depth of field that we can, achieve, we can achieve. I said five initially because there is another one, uh, which we will call the night of 10 beers, should we say, where everything's out of focus and everything's blurry. Uh, now, I can't imagine anyone's going to want to do a scene like that. But in truth, I don't think it's actually very easy to do in Daz that, where everything will just be out of focus. Uh, so we're going to ignore that one. Uh, and we're just going to take a look at the, the other four states of depth of field that we can achieve. Now, the first of those states, as we just flip the cam camera around for a moment just to look down from above, is where we're not using any depth of field at all. That's the normal, natural, standard default view that we all see. Uh, and so as we look down on our scene there, there's no area that's going to be out of focus. And if we just bring on uh, the render that we would do in that situation with no depth of field, we can see the foreground is... Uh, in focus the cat and the model herself is in focus and of course the background is in focus that's your default camera settings when when you get a you know a setup and a render and set a camera up there's no depth of field and you just get a nice clear image now the second depth of field state is where we focus something in the foreground of the image uh, but then the background of the image is then all blurry as represented by the green shaded area on the image that you can see. And if we bring on the, the render that this produces, as you can see, the foreground is all nice and clear. But from our model backwards, everything is out of focus because the depth of field is kicking in and we can't really clearly see what's going on in the background because we're focusing on the candle and you know the plate of stew, whatever it is in the, the front of the image. Now, the third uh, state that we'll be looking at is probably the opposite of that, where the front of the, the foreground of the, the render that we do is going to be out of focus, but then everything beyond that is going to be in focus, as you can also see on the image here. Everything's blurry in front, but our model backwards is in focus, and we can see everything clearly in the scene. And then finally, uh, we come to the probably my ideal choice where the foreground and the background is uh, out of focus but our model itself is in focus as you can see there on the right represented in the green areas that are out of focus and in the image itself where the foreground and the background is out of focus. Those are the four states uh, of depth of field that we can achieve within DAS and now we're going to get into the technicalities of showing how we achieve each of those states. Now, to be able to add a depth of field effect into our scene, we actually need to create a camera. You, you know, your perspective camera isn't going to be enough for this. We need to create the camera. I'm going to guess everybody knows how to do that, but for those people who are new to DAS and are just looking in, we just do that easily by coming up to create, coming to new camera, 
and hitting that. Uh, now what I'm going to do in this situation, I've already got a camera set up as you can see. I'm just going to apply uh, this new camera to the, the current view that we're looking at. So it'll position it exactly where we are. As you can just see where these little lines have come in. Now if I come back out now to the perspective camera and I just rotate around ever so slightly, just come past all this, we can see now the new camera that we've got set up there. Uh, and it's shining out into and creating the viewport that we were just looking through onto our model, as you can see. Now, to create a depth of field effect, all that we need to do is with our camera selected, we come down to our uh, tabs on the down on the side here and we click on camera tab. And then we come on to the camera sub menu, as you can see there. <clears throat> And we, we can ignore all the top uh, three of those things. And what we're, what we're looking at is depth of field. Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, it'll be default set to off. And all that we need to do is just turn it on. Now, you didn't see much happen there. But if I spin the camera around, we can see that this crazy shape has been created. If I turn it off again and then back on and back off. And what that shape is, it's like a square or the front face and the back face of a, of a cube uh, that's just been stretched and distorted, probably due to perspective. Uh, again, if we just go on and off, we can just see them. This is the back plane of the original camera. And so we can just see uh, those two little planes of our... Basically, that's the, the area that, that's going to be in focus with our, you know, with our camera. Uh, so anything that would fall between this front plane here and this back plane there in this little area will be in focus and everything in front of that plane will be out of focus and everything behind this plane will be out of focus but everything between the two planes will be in focus. Now if I just centre on our model for a moment what we need to look at now are these two uh, sliders here at the, at the bottom focal distance and f slash stop. Now <clears throat> The focal distance determines when we start sliding it just where about those two planes exist. Uh, as I come up the slider, they go to the right, and as I come down the slider, they come to the left. And what we want to do uh, is whatever we want to be in focus, we need to make sure and ensure that it's between the front and the back of those two planes. Uh, if we want to go into the, the front view, we bring it down here. If we want to get our model into focus, we bring it there. And if we want to go into the background, so the background's in focus and everything else is out of focus, we bring it this way. Uh, now you'll notice that as we move closer to the camera, the, the distance between those two planes gets smaller and smaller. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the, the, the technical details as to why that is, but just imagine looking at something close up, uh, where you're having to go cockeyed to be able to look at it. You get a really, really narrow, uh, you know, really, really narrow focus when you really focus on something up close to you. And that's what this is representing. Uh, so if we want to create the, the situation or the scene where uh, we want to put the foreground in focus, let's say at the candle area or at the, the bowl of soup area, we need to bring this focal distance over just to about where we want to be, which will be about there. If you want to extend the area of focus, we can come down to this slider called f-stop, which is defaulted at 22 there. And if we increase that, you can see that we push the bars or those two planes apart. So what we'd be doing there is extending the area of focus. Or likewise, we can go back the other way. Uh, if we come all the way back down to where 22 is and then go the other way, we can really narrow that focus in if you just want a little sliver of area that's focused. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it at 22. And that's all we need. That's it. That's everything done. That is the depth of focus now set up. So if I now come round to our camera, we don't see much on there, but... If we now transition over to the render that that creates, you can see there, which we showed earlier, where the front of this table is in focus and everything behind it is now out of focus. And so now if we want to achieve the, the opposite effect, that means the foreground out of focus and everything from our model and behind it in focus, we just move the focal distance now up until it uh, in place where we want it and then we have to increase the f-stop now because uh, the f-stop pushes apart the two planes you kind of have to do it in little little steps you do a little bit of one then you do a little bit of the other and then move the f uh, 
the focal distance in again and just got to keep checking where we are we're more or less at the fireplace there there's the the back plane that i'm tracing out there that we can see uh and that's good and so now if we come into our camera and take a look we don't see any difference there but when we now have a look at the effect that we get you can see now that the, the, the front of the table and the candle and the soup and whatnot is out of focus and yet our model and whatever is behind her is in focus and that's great. And so now the final thing that we need to take a look at is just putting the you know the foreground out of focus, the background out of focus and just keeping our model itself in focus. And the simple way we do that, we more or less did it then the first time around when we were just moving the uh, background part into place is just put our model in the in the middle of the two planes make it a relatively small uh gap between the two so just a default f-stop will generally do it and then when we come round to our camera again and then flip across to the view that we want as you can see we've got the foreground out of focus the background out of focus and our model in lovely focus in the center and it gives a lovely nice little effect it just I don't, I've always thought the depth of field just adds something to an image. I don't know why. I love putting it in my images. Uh, and as I said earlier, I'm surprised that uh, you know other people, or not many other people, seem to use it, which is a bit of a surprise. And of course, though, uh, the fourth state of all that is just having no depth of field at all, which we saw earlier. And as you can see now on screen, everything's in focus, nothing blurry. If I flip back to the... Uh, the one where the back and the foreground's in out of focus, I just tend to think it looks better with a little bit of depth of field in there. Uh, so there you go. Thank you very much for watching. That is depth of field or DOF, as I said, you might hear it called. I hope you've enjoyed the video and hope you've gotten something out of it. If so, then please, please, please give me a like down below and share the video around if you could. It really does help the video in the algorithm of YouTube. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subs you know consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell and that will be really really appreciated also finally if you've got any comments or any questions about this video about depth of field or about das 3d in general then drop them down in the comments below and i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can so again thanks for watching i hope you've gotten something out of this video and i'll see you next time bye bye now